Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'll be reviewing a projector that I bought myself. And probably you're wondering, this is one of the cheapest projectors in the AliExpress or many of the websites if you check it. It just looks very similar, let's just say similar, not a copy product, from Samsung Freestyle. It has the angles, it has the design, it has a plastic case, rounded shape, focus up top, and it has Android 720p. It looks good from probably every angle. And it sounds good when I say it's $50 to $75, depending on the region, the website, and the brand that you purchase. Reason that I create this video, this is one of the cheapest products, and everybody wonders how this performs, and there is not much of a review out there. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Mac Cubic brand, but everything will be probably similar for many of the brands in the market because they use the same hardware. So what I'm going to tell you in this video will be just in general from $50 to $75 range, these sort of devices. But if you uh, anyway encounter something different with your purchase, like if you purchase like $100 similar looking product and it, if it's good, just write at the comment section. I can't buy every single cheap projector out there to test it because I don't need it. But the reason that I purchase this device, let's just give the spoiler in advance. If you're going to use this projector for your only setup, don't buy it. I'm not against the brand and I'm not against the product lineup, but the issue is it's lacking the focus. It's lacking the brightness. It's lacking um, in many ways, like when you make it up top, the remote, it's not working ideally. So the focusing ring is there and things. I will explain. There are a lot of faults of this device, but the thing that I purchased for is my kid and my nephews. Because if you have a small kid, you probably understand what I'm going to talk about in a minute. Like if you have kids from two years old to five years old, they don't want to go to sleep. They want to stay up late with you or they want you to be with them until they go to sleep. Even if you read a book or tell a story or just uh, stay with them for a while until they go to sleep and they uh, feel safe. Nowadays, it's becoming difficult because we have gaming accessories, electronics, lights, and also the parents are staying up late. So kids don't want to sleep alone or at least they don't want to sleep at all sometimes. So. How do we solve it and what is this thing has to do with it? The biologically, if we lay down, we can sleep easier because the body sends a signal to the hormone manufacturer that creates the hormones for sleeping procedure. You know by now, if you lay down in front of a TV, you uh, sleep easily. You lay down in front of a projector, it doesn't mean anything bad. You sleep, go to sleep easier. The one thing for sure, this is not ideal because of the blue light is coming right up your face or your eye, uh, eyes. It's not ideal because it will decrease the hormone levels uh, for your sleep, but better than never. So if you're not going to go to sleep, at least slowly going into the sleep, kind of like probably better in my opinion. So there are projectors out there for kids to apply onto the ceiling, you leave it on the ground and they just project stars, lights, galaxies, clouds, whatever. They're just They have one mode or five to ten modes. They just project some image and rotate it. I know these se this seems cool and simplistic and I think it is, but basically if their quality is good, the remote control, if they have is, uh, something like a Bluetooth speaker, then you go up to prices like $40 to $60 range, and they don't project movies like this. So I bought this projector instead of a child room, small kid room projector. For that reason, I can lay it down onto the ground and to the ceiling, I can project the uh, cartoons that the kids like, stories, clouds, Drone footages, they 
that, that will make you relaxed because some of the drone footage is out there like flying over mountains, flying over natural environment will probably relax you before you sleep. And if they have a relaxing music too, it will help you, uh, them help the kids to go to sleep. And if you have a sleeping problem, this might work for you. Like you go to, before you go to sleep, you can open up a Netflix. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't recommend watching movies before you go to sleep, but if you want it, you can do it with these sort of devices. Even they are $50 or $75, they worth the money that you spend. But basically in advance, like I told you, if you're expecting too much, like a single projector, the only projector in the house. And if you want to watch movies with your friends, this is not ideal projector, but in the scenario for the kids, for before the sleep, for the ceiling, this is kind of like one of the ideal products. It is cheap. One thing is, uh, it might, it's, it can be a questionable, uh, point. It's the focus. And I will show you in close ups so you can have better idea how much focus this thing can do. And you'll decide it for yourself because I believe the focus is more important than the brightness itself. Because if you have a ghosting effect, in the projector, which I will create another topic. It can hurt your eye in the long run. If you're going to use the projector like I do for daily basis, just like a TV, you can hurt your eyes. So to prevent that, we're going to look at the focus that it can do. But since it's before the sleep and it's on the ceiling and it's not going to be too concentrated watching and you can get away with it. I believe you can get away with it. That's why I bought this device and I will be showing you in the detail is it worth to your money or is it going to be the choice of you? You'll decide because I'm not going to tell you anything. Like in my opinion, I won't buy it as my single unit for watching uh, movies. And I did a couple of videos. I will go back and refer to this, those videos as well, because if you haven't watched it, this is the only video that you see me. I create most of the time tutorials to prevent uh, crazy choices or just for the budget fast paced choices. Understand the topic, understand the projection and just make your choice. This is like a tutorial kind of review. The, the video is new cheap LED projector versus secondhand bull projector. If you haven't watched this, just watch that video in the channel because it is helpful. If I buy this projector for my only single unit, I wait a while and I get my $100 range of price and I buy Epson, ViewSonic, uh, NEC or any kind of brand that I already know, big brands with good quality optics. Just focus on the glass. If they have a good glass in the front, you can go 720p. If they have good glass, they will give you sharp images. The glass is one of the most important part of the projector and it's one of the most expensive part. Just watch that video. I will compare each positives and negatives and you'll decide it for yourself. Just gather your money. Don't hurry too much. And one of the uh, reasons that I show you, this is a 720p Epson projector. And if I don't tell you, you don't understand if it's full HD or not because of the quality. If the quality is good, everything will be looking good. And the wall and the screen total education is one of the videos that you should be watching. The ultra short trove versus long trove or ultra short trove detailed guide is important. And how you can catch the TV contrast kind of tutorials that I made is worth a while. Do it yourself style. I will be just referring a couple of videos. I know. But I painted these speakers white and this will be soon, hopefully white too. So one last thing is, let me just go back and find that video. If you haven't watched that, I have a video, friendly conversation before buying a projector. That is one of the most, uh, uh, my favorite videos because it's just, before buying a projector, consider everything in total kind of video. It's 40 minutes, but you'll understand the topic and it will prevent you to make any mistake before buying a projector or any kind of electronic for that matter. It's just like a friendly conversation. 
and you can play it in two weeks speed and you'll still understand if your English is even in the mid levels. So before further ado, don't waste any more time and review this projector. I'd like to take a look in the details of this projector's materials and how it's going to be affecting our usage out of it. Up top, we see when we take a good close look, we can see the inside. That shows us the airflow is from bottom to up, up to bottom kind of style, which is basically a logical thing. If you're going to project upwards, it will create a high end cooling setup because when you take the air from below cool air comes in and the hot air comes out that's a plus we got a focus ring up top and near in the end of it and it moves the lens as you can see let me just show you the lens moves quite out and also in even though it has a lot of way to move it doesn't focus that good i will show you in the rest of the probably video, but the focus ring, having a focus ring is a good thing. We have branding, but branding is not important. Many of the products probably are using the same hardware. The movement mechanism, I think it's safe. Let's just show it to you. It's going with the steps. How many steps? Let's count down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 kind of like a 12 steps that's a good thing because you can make it like this from the side and you can project to any wall or just a small table like a little bit of angle and then you can go way beyond and up top and also it's just reversely going but it doesn't mean anything because you have to also adjust the screen and flip it some way so we got a rubber feet that creates a lot of friction so it doesn't move as you can see if i move it it doesn't move when you uh, put it on a table like a cannon there is no problem it is so sturdy this is a good design so it, they are taking the design from the samsung so there is nothing bad about it i can tell and at the back we have a power input the cable is standard that is something good to hear we don't have adapters that uh, comes with many of the uh, small projectors uh, tend to have a better of course quality with full hd and stuff but having no adapter is a good thing you just need a cable so you can extend the cable you can purchase later on a longer cable that's an advantage usb port is working and i've tried with the usbs and hd port as you can see the hdmi and the remote remote functions are not good the sensor is here and it's not picking up when while you want to use it like 3.5 millimeter jack is a good thing but while you apply it like this onto the ceiling you have to always move your uh, remote control to get the signal out so moving just a little bit and making everything possible and then uh, up, apply the ceiling projection is the best way to go with this projector otherwise you'll hate your remote control because it doesn't take the signal too much so if you do it like this, normally use, uh, instead of upwards, like a ceiling use, uh, it's okay. So, without further ado, don't waste any time and show the rest of the device. This is the physical abilities. And material-wise, this is a good-looking thick plastic, thick plastic, so it's durable. I think it's durable, quite durable. When I'm squeezing it, no cracking, so it's... The, by, the, by the way, this spherical design is always like a sturdy uh, when it comes down to the rigidity. So it's, it's a good solid design. There is nothing bad about it in the physical way. But the optical element and the focus, we're going to be talking again. In this part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, menu, which most of the time I try to show of the projectors. Simple Android menu. I don't think that this device has the Netflix license. Probably none of the license will be there. So if I were you, I wouldn't be risking to give this device my actual Google account with the payment included. Just create a child or regular account uh, from scratch if you value your in credentials and your information. 
because like the Linus video uh, also talked about this and I made another video about this safety of these devices when you go to the professional brands if you go to the smaller brands you know you should be knowing the brand so if I don't know the brand like this I don't install my actual Google account uh, keep that in mind we got Google Play HDMI files we can file the, uh, we can check the files and clusters and settings shows uh, device settings and applications you can install probably from its own market by the way I am hating the remote right now you hear it by now I pushed 10 times it's awful again I push the home button to get back let me just push it and wait this is the second time yes it worked Aptoid TV, Calculator, Chrome, Disney Plus, which again, I don't think it has the license actually. So we have the casting, but you, for the casting, you need to mirror cast, go to the mirror cast settings. It doesn't actually shows itself like an Android dongle or uh, let's just say Apple TV kind of like style. So it will be just a one step uh, again, but you can cast to these devices. And I did cast it, it works. Cody is. If you like the play IPTV and stuff and gallery, do we have anything else in the second page? Let's just see YouTube, Prime Video, Amazon Prime and online upgrade. And in the screen sharpness test, you see the upgrade happened. 24 megabytes of update took about 10 minutes. I don't know why it could be maybe big update, but number could be wrong. Let's just go back. Time to time, it has the updates, but I don't know what it updates. It doesn't give you a list of things that features. So go to the settings, screen zoom, protection mode, and the keystone correction. Right now, the sharpness, for my taste, it's near awful. In the center, as you can see, the image is angled right now because we are projecting from a table, small table to right in front of us. It's uh, about 65 inch right now from the below. Up top, it's maybe 67, one or two inch, inch bigger. Let's just go to the keystone correction. Manual keystone correction. I will just take, let me just take the right and make it straight. Try to make it straight. It looks straighter and it doesn't go for the first click you hear my clicks right it needs to apply it's crazy remote will make you hate this device if you're going to like i said use this device as an only device it's kind of like square right now let me just go Right now I am doing everything, yeah, from 20 centimeters to the projector. Yeah, we corrected the angle and right now this is exactly 65 inch TV size. So projection mode, let's go to the projection mode. Rotate front, rotate rear, rotate rear ceiling and rotate ceiling. So it does have the mode because it turns around 180 degrees from one side to the other side. So this is a good thing considering the design. They have put it there. That's a good thing. Screen zoom. Well, that's not going to make anything. But when we activate it, the keystone is gone. Let's just go back. If the keystone is dead, we might need to add it again. I don't want to apply and the keystone is gone. So we have to make the keystone again. Let's just do it again. Right now we are near flat, not exactly. The camera angle might not show it as a perfect square, but right now in front of me, I can adjust the camera like this. It's looking like a near straight visual. Let's just adjust the camera. And below, right below the screen, we have the 65 inch TV and we know it's 65 inch. The sharpness is quite soft. If there is a way to check that out and try to enhance it, we just need to go back a little bit, one step back. What do we have in the projection mode? We got this 
and we don't have nothing else. But uh, we have also the other settings. Time settings could be good for the kids before the sleep. Audio settings, we have the audio leveling. As you can see, it's right now up top. It has a decent speaker considering the size of it. And the settings of Wi-Fi, we managed it. Like you can connect it to Bluetooth speakers as well. The language is right now in English. And the other settings, factor reset, application. Let's just see application settings, what this does. It has all winner insights. We already know that as a hardware. So it doesn't have too much to play with. So let's go back. And... Do, you, do I have another thing? I have probably, it has the mouse kind of like a clicking system, but it doesn't, it has the mouse logo, mouse click, but it doesn't worth, work, sorry. In the dark, the buttons are not doing anything. Now, oh, this button did something and it's, not, it's very difficult to use it in the dark because you don't see the buttons. That's one thing and the buttons don't hit don't work that's that's a whole other topic so what we can do we will play some footage from now on to test it and the brightness level we will test it When you think that uh, image is sharp, don't forget about this is 65 inch TV size and it needs to be sharp. But if, if we stop the video, these are HDR 4K uh, OLED. Let's just stop it. Remote didn't work again. So if, when you consider this, the bees and the flower needs to be exactly sharpest stage for the 65 inch, but we don't see that. Even the icons are softer. So when you see something sharp in this video, we're shooting 4K, but don't forget this is 72 pen TP squeezed in the 65 inch size. And the room is near pitch black. I can see myself, but what I see when I see blacks, I see a lot of gray, but I can't make the camera shot that way because I need to shoot a HDR. I don't want to shoot HDR in this stage because it's not going to show you the real quality of the projector. Let's just see as much as we can deliver to you. By the way, you're hearing probably how many times I push the button. So the flower is popped out and the sharpness of the bee is a lot less than it should be. We are seeing the fur, but it's not as sharp as it should be. This is a 4K OLED footage and it's in 65 inch squeeze. Every detail, you see it, but it's not sharp. It's blurred. You can handle it. You can live with this. You can use it for 65 when you're going camping or for the child room up top ceiling. This could work a lot. But when you go back and create a big image, which I will make, in the other parts of this video, you'll see how the light is going to lose itself. By the way, even though it's generally looking sharp, on the edges, it's very, very soft. You only see that when you buy a higher or professional level optic projector. If you want to see what it does in the big screen, just wait a while. I'll just try to add on some stuff and finish the testing. In this part, we're going to calculate the ansi lumen power, which is the true power of a projector. I have a light measurement tool, which I will use in a second, but I'd like to talk about right now the screen and the camera is tuned up and you see the corners are not perfectly white. 
like in the middle. This shows the optical quality of this projector. Many of the projectors tend to create, if you have a budget projector, definitely, the uh, vignetting that somehow if you shoot portrait photo, then vignetting might be an issue that you want to achieve. But in the in this sort of projections, you don't want it. I can see it with my eyes. That is how obvious it is. And the fringing around the corner, I will try to shoot another photo or a video fringing around the corner shows the true sharpness of it. Like it's difficult, but right now I see a colored like a blue style fringing around the, this corner and every corner. And even the corners are not soft, uh, sorry, are not sharp. So that shows how this projector is failing to uh, create a sharp image, even from the corners, because corners also shows the pretty much where you stand, where you project and what's going to be. So the texts are quite soft, even if you don't see it in this video. For the ANSI Lumen, I made another video. You can watch that out. I will measure the uh, numbers and calculate it. You'll see on the screen, 77, 9 points, 94, and 70. 77, 94, 70, 82, 117, 86, 82, 86, and one last time, 93, 120, 88. 93, 120, 88. These numbers also shows where the light is interestingly differentiating from corner to corner. This is 77, 94, 70. This is 82, 117, and 86. And in here, 120. We are all knowing this, that in the middle, like a torch, torch light, in the middle we will have the best light, but you'll see the light differentiation by your own in this setup. And you're going to see while I talk about this, the NC Lumen, the true power of it. Reason that we calculate nine different points and apply it to the screen size, NC Lumen doesn't change when you go back and forth. It will be measured by the screen size and the light all together. So going back and forth doesn't mean anything. But many of the companies tend to use it like they declare uh, their lumen power, right? The power in front of the lens or before, even before the lens, the total power output. You know, because they do it, they want to show how bright their projector are. But in total, it is what we see that matters so numbers are not just declaring the quality don't get me uh, don't get misunderstand the subject so watch my ansi lumen lumen tutorial video to understand before buying a projector right now the image size is 100 inch and the text is near awful i will come close to the screen and some what about prevent the main maybe I'm in the middle, but this area is completely losing the focus. If you can zoom from the YouTube, do the zoom and enhance your resolution to get this part is awfully blurred. And up top is also awfully blurred. And again, this corner is very soft. All of the texts are extremely soft. You don't want to use this projector for 100 inch size. This is only for 80 or 75 inch and the less. So consider this, if you're going to buy this for a big movies, don't. And again, I will hit the play button and just try to get the visual big as possible. You might see some sort of a sharpness in the fur of the bird. And it is, when you watch a video, you don't get it, but this could hurt your eyes in the long run. If you watch like this, 
you'll definitely have eye problems. I can guarantee that because fringing and uh, soft image will hurt your eyes. Instead of this, just wait a while and buy a 720p good projector, not these sort of cheap projectors. Like I told you, this is like a tutorial kind of a video. If you not, if you don't be careful in this topic of sharpness, the brightness is not the problem. As you can see, the near fully dark room. This is right now kind of like a pitch black room. The only thing that is open at the left, the doors and the sun. This is right now sunny day of the summer 2023. So it is one o'clock in the morning in the middle of the day. But the curtains are uh, block, some blockers are on. And this is kind of like a pitch black room where I can only see myself as a shadow. So that's why the quality is like this. When you open up at least one light, let me just open the side lights. And here it is, side lights are open. And the side lights are quite strong, you can see me. That's how strong these side lights are. I can make a video review in this sort of light, but still you lose everything. So this is not, again, any kind of light will ruin the image. Don't forget about this. Uh, but the softness is hurting my eyes. I just want you to see that. And we're going to make a close-up shot too. Let's go to the close-ups. This is the sharpness of the side, like I told you earlier. The Wonders Relaxation Views. Just take a look at this text below. And when you look at it, you'll see Wonders is near impossible to read. Let me just try to refocus on that because we are projecting with a little bit of angle. If I can manage it, let me just move it around. I lost the focus even more. I managed to focus around that, but I lost the complete focus in the rest of the video. So I, if I focus in the middle, then this is what I can achieve. So corner focuses are incredibly low if you focus on the middle you need to keep the image small let's just go to the middle of it and try to look at the middle this is the middle of it right now and we are focused here and even that this is not sharp at all as you can see this is extremely soft let me just get close extremely soft and vignetting and ghosting effects so this will hurt your eyes I can guarantee that. Every device has the limitation. Here it is as a 43 to 45 inch size. And I think this projector really shines in this setup. Like if you're going to go camping and if you don't want to buy a TV for the kids, if you don't want to, you know, the kids room, they play tend to play with balls and stuff and they can crack the TV. So if you don't want the TV, watch them to TV. Or if you have a portable setup, like if you don't watch them, uh, want them to play a lot of console games while you are not there, you can pick up this projector and console together and then take the console and the projector again to prevent them for a long time gaming. But definitely this is the size where this device really can shine. So let's just go back, try an other uh, HDR OLED video from LG again. It sounds good, it feels good, and it's. Uh, let me just arrange the brightness level because it's right now too bright. I will dial it down. It can bring up the details in this size. But for me, if you go to the 43 inches, for 50 to 75 dollar you can definitely buy a 43 inch tv for the playhouse the playroom or kids room or any room for that matter in the bargain of purchase times especially in uh, discount times at the end of the year and the summer kind of style so you you you, you don't want to uh, spend $75 instead of buying a $100, $150 kind of like a TV. And I will highly prefer that Full HD TV than this because the sharpness is still on the text quite bad. Even in the 43 inches size, 
sharpness is bad and the ghosting is there let me just take the camera from the tripod and show you the close-up this is what a 40 a three inch size image and the sharpness as you can see there is ghosting you know why because i focused in the text in the middle look at the corner look at the corner camera focuses to the pixels and look at the middle when the camera focuses in the middle you can read the text easily sharpness is quite there i need to shoot with the angle because if i get get in front of the projector you won't see the image but around the corner, it is extremely soft and especially in the search text, ghosting. In the middle again, in the video, you can't see the thumbnail as sharp as it should be, but at least the text is there. So that will give you a definitive idea of this projector. Welcome to the end of this video. I am glad that you watched this video until the end. Even if you skip, just go back and forth a little bit and you can fasten the videos since I talk a little slower for easy of understanding. So what we can talk about this projector in total, it is in the end with the calculations you've seen on the screen if you, if you haven't skipped the test region. It has 106 ansi lumens of power. The power is not the problem here. You can use 100 uh, ANSI lumen power in a pitch black room. But the problem of this projector is the sharpness and you can't solve it later on. If you can darken your room, you can solve the problem of light somehow and you get close with the projector and get a brighter image, little bit smaller, but brighter image. You can also solve that. But you can't solve the sharpness problem of this projector. Who is this projector for then? Like I told you in the beginning of the video, if you're going to watch movies with your kids on the ceiling, or if you can bring this thing with a converter into a camping, not for a long time, just for a couple of uh, minutes, maybe watching uh, 20 minutes of YouTube session or some sort of uh, cartoons for kids before they sleep in the tent, if you're camping as a family, then this might work out. But other than that, if you're going to use it in a daily basis, just like a regular projector for gaming with console or watching a movie, trying to enjoy a movie, this is not a sharp projector. Even in the best condition, like 43 inch size small like this, corners are not ideal. And this projector does not have a 3.5 millimeter jack that you can adjust the height. One of the problems of placing projector is that if you don't project from straight angle, I made another video why you should be straight with your projector. If you don't be straight with your projector, if you angle it, that means you're focusing either front or the back, either corner or in the middle, because you're projecting with an angle. That's an optical problem. And to solve it with this projector, you need to put it something high because you don't have a tripod stand. That's one of the issues too. I know it looks cool with the stand and all, but if you don't just make it straight up to the ceiling, if you project like this, you're projecting with an angle of 20 to 30 uh, degrees, and that will change the quality of the image. And that's what we have experienced in this video around the corners at too much of a softness. And if you focus on the a corner, uh, the uh, right in the middle is gone. Uh, if you're going to project 43 inch, well, what's the point of the projector then? You can really easily find in the second hand market 720p or full HD TV. Like people want to change their upgrade their TVs and you can easily find six or seven, eight years old 720p TV probably. I'm not talking about even full HD TVs. You can find really 720p TVs uh, in cheaper markets. And if it's in the extreme uh, spotlight of the discount times, you can really buy $150 kind of like a price, full HD or even 4K small TVs. So instead of this, if I'm not going to carry it around, I would choose TV, small TV, because this is a small screen uh, manageable projector. And the one last thing, it can be used in the kids room, definitely, because 
The focus won't be a problem for them. You can put it on a bookshelf and project a small image. It's not the actual problem. It's the action of before going to sleep for the kids. They are not going to be focusing on the screen too much. They'll be going like, uh, and then they'll go into the sleep. So that's the issue. Uh, for them to go to sleep easier, this could be an option. And if you're going to watch a Netflix show for a long time, well, in the beginning of the video, I set it as an option probably, but it won't be a good option. I would prefer still $100 and above products. And like my beginning, I told you I wanted this video as a tutorial. Don't go too cheap, less than $100. Even in the second-hand market, the glass is expensive, so you'll be probably giving up the sharpness and the brightness. Resolution is not the only thing to focus. 720p is still enough. You can check out more my one of the latest videos 720p ultra short throw cheapest ultra short throw from epson if it's a good 720p you cannot understand if it's full hd or not so the optical quality the projection quality is important Re don't too much of a focus on the uh, resolution and one last thing you can definitely consider second hand 720p old projectors like epson thank you vivsonic optoma and many of the projectors out there, Wambu, Wankyo, Blitzwolf also, these are the new ones if you're going to go to the LED direction. LED projectors, from my point of view, should be starting $120 and above for 2023. And if you go above $200, and you're definitely going to find something sharp, something usable around 100 inch. And... Please watch my tutorials to understand all these topics in general. I don't recommend these product lines in general. Uh, I don't want to say stay away from them. Uh, but let me know if you have a better copy than I do, because sometimes these products have quality issues. One-to-one -one quality differentiates. I have a long focus ring, but I don't use it if I don't get too close. So what's the point of the huge focus ring and moving in and out? Let me know your experience and probably many of the people will regret if they buy this projector after uh, without watching this video. But share this video with your friends and my tutorials to make people around you if they want to buy a projector to understand the topic and then decide this uh, unit or not. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye from Home Cinema and Tech Review.